Hello, good evening, welcome to TDM Talk Show. I'm your host, Joana Freitas. With us this evening, we have Jackie Ho, head of the Department of Innovative Social Work of the City University of Macau. Thank you so much for being with us here good on the here. show. Um, I would like to start with the recent announcements for this year's policy address, um, policy address in regards to the elderly. Uh, we've heard the government's plan of constructing new buildings for, for these elder, elderly people um, with support infrastructures. What's, how do you see this decision? Well, finally, something very exciting to, to see happening. And um, I think over for the past 10 years or so, the government is trying to find new solutions uh, to this uh, population aging, how to deal with uh, the upcoming uh, generation of elderly um, that have a different lifestyle, different expectations compared to the last generations. Mm -hmm. So um, with um, this new project, uh, I think it will give a, a quite positive um, you know, outcome um, to social security and also to how we uh, care about our elderly in the future. Mm -hmm. um, also, the government, well, we hope that the government can actually pull out a, a timetable um, as to when will this happen and when will be the first batch of um, uh, residents uh, to start going in. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's exciting. They've been mentioning uh, this a lot and actually two years ago you mentioned the, the specifications that uh, you suggested some specifications for the buildings to be constructed. They need to be not so tall, they need to have elevators, they need to have infrastructures, which was also what they said in the policy address. But you, you mentioned dates and calendars. So one of the decisions they made is to first put these people that are in older buildings in the P uh, land in um, Araya Preta in the, be, before getting them to, to the new urban zones. So um, what do they need to take into account for these specific buildings, both the, the temporary ones and the new ones that are going to the new urban land? Well, I think um, all the facility infrastructures, either in the temporary uh, and transition uh, place or in the more permanent uh, place, have to uh, meet the same standard as we uh, build a structure for our elderly um, residents. Um, they need, for example, elevator and all that, you know, sort of the infrastructure mm -hmm. requirements has to be met. Uh, at the same time, whether they have social support or organizations that will be there to provide uh, uh, social care for them. That is also where we are looking at. So uh, at the same time that um, we heard that the government might have some plan out as to how uh, the new building will be um, designed. Mm -hmm. uh, I also heard some uh, news about, um, uh, you know, from, from friends uh, that they are trying to build a new uh, one uh, bedroom, um, a studio or apartment. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then I would like to add on my opinion that uh, it will be nice to have a, um, a slightly bigger space Why is that? for the elderly. For family? Uh, not just for family, but also we, we, we have to take into account that the elderly are going to be there for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, and the government is trying to support the idea of having care in the city and care in the urban area. Um, not so much uh, to provide care in the residential care setting, which is the normalized, um, you know, the, the conventional way of, of taking care of our elderly. Um, so it would be nice to have uh, space uh, in the future for our elderly to hire carer, mm -hmm. for example, or to have some sort of um, uh, semi-medical facilities that could be put in place in that home. Um, so we, we are looking into the future needs of this uh, residents, not just for having a place for them to get them out from the old, older building zone mm -hmm. to the new one. Mm -hmm. the, the, the population in Macau is aging. You, one of your research areas is actually the aging uh, society. Mm. Um, you, you mentioned about the calendar. How do you think this, this um, when do you think this should be put in place in order to cope with the necessity that we're going to need in the future? So in 2019 up to 2000. 20, uh, we have 14.6% um, over the age of 65. Mm -hmm. uh, compared to 2019, uh, we're somewhere between 11.1%. Um, so we can see that the uh, population of particularly, in particular, the elderly uh, has been rising. And there are so much needs that have to accommodate uh, for their uh, retired life or even uh, their medical uh, needs as mm -hmm. well. So 
I would hope that at least within the first term of the current government can be put in place, uh, you know, this new project. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, well, we are keeping our fingers crossed. Uh, mm -hmm. So hopefully uh, within five years time, we can see something, you know, actual building mm -hmm. that our elderly can move in. Um, another of the policies uh, besides this, uh, there's, there were also subsidies increasing, more health uh, vouchers that include also like free health care for the, for the elderly people. But there are other measures, um, which is the construction of more elderly homes, not only in Macau, but in Enxi. Mm. So it is a good idea. It's a good idea to have people that always lived here in the city to move to another city when they're older. Uh, well, we have to go back as to the previous governments that's actually mentioned about this before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, they hope that um, the Hanjin uh, Island Project or even the Greater Bay Area could be uh, sort of this integration between Macau and set up the linkage be between Macau and also other surrounding regions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a good idea uh, to have an expanding uh, locations for people to choose. Um, because after all, it is, it is also up for the individual to, de to determine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not uh, mandatory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not mandatory. So, um, and, and we can see that recently the government uh, put in place some, some uh, actual uh, policy uh, or um, uh, actual scheme that uh, make it more convenient uh, for people to uh, reside in Greater Bay Area or even to Hanchin. So uh, Hanchin, as we all know, is going to be thriving in terms of development. Mm -hmm. So I think in terms of choices, um, well, it's, it's sometimes it's good to have um, several choices for us to choose. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see the Macau, Macau older people choosing to go? It's, it's, it's quite a, maybe in China is quite the same, but mm. the Greater Bay is already like more city. Mm. Uh, do you see them actually choosing to go there? Uh, well, uh, as of this moment, we don't have a solid research yeah. to support mm -hmm. uh, this statement, whether people will be living uh, in Henshin or choose to live there. Mm -hmm. um, but I would foresee that the future generation of our, elf, of our elderly mm -hmm. um, will prefer to have uh, places to go to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even outside of Macau, they can sometimes stay in Macau and they can also go to Henshin or even go to some parts in the Greater, greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's sort of uh, creating a lifestyle choices for us. And, you know, when we're retired, we love to have a places to go, to travel, uh, to see, you know, and to eat. You mm -hmm. know, that would be a nice choice. Give us something to do. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, you mentioned the benefits. The City University has actually issued a recent study um, where it suggested that to have Enxin and the Greater Bay Area as alternatives would be okay if they can benefit from the same policies that they benefit in Macau. Do you think that's feasible, considering there's different governments from both sides? Well, that's why they have to create uh, some sort of um, a special district that the Macau residents, they can also enjoy the same benefits as they are in Macau, and also they can enjoy in Henshi or even uh, in some parts of the Greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, I presume, and I also, uh, uh, understand that um, actually several governments within these regions uh, have started to discuss about the possibility of setting some scheme uh, for people in Macau to travel and to reside in this area. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of health, healthcare insurance, um, I think that will be a nice place to start with. Uh, whether Macau residents can enjoy the same benefits of healthcare choices uh, in these regions um, I think that is the most uh, important uh, uh, elements that we have to take into account. Mm -hmm. and, and that would be one first step to convince them, quote unquote, to, to go, to move into other areas also, to promote this lifestyle in another place um, other than Macau. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't uh, tell people to, to, to go to a park when there's nothing there, right? <laughs> I think they should, they should first set up you know, all the facilities that are needed and necessary in that area, and then people could be attracted over there. I mean, whether you set up restaurants, supermarkets, you know, healthcare center, schools, and other different types of facilities, not just to attract elderly, but also other people as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, before we go to our next question, which is also related to that, but also with dementia, I would like to, to 
for you to tell me if you know, if you can evaluate. Is Macau, Macau society has always been like the Chinese traditional societies, um, a place where the younger take care of the older people. But we see a lot of elderly living alone and the problem with the buildings um, and the need of having social workers do some certain jobs like give them food and go shopping for them. Do you think that is changing? The society is changing in the way of the elderly are more alone and they don't belong um, with the main family anymore? Uh, how do you evaluate that? Do you have any, any knowledge about that? Uh, th there are sort of like three um, aspects to answer these questions. First of all, whether our uh, you know, new generation of youth, uh, their attitude towards caring for their older parents, mm -hmm. um, whether it's being leaning towards they're willing or not willing. Uh, the second aspect is, um, why is it that there are so many elderly, uh, rising elderly, uh, that are living alone? And, and what kind of needs and support they should receive? Mm -hmm. um, I think to answer these questions, uh, we can see that uh, in Macau society, uh, nowadays there are some organizations already started to expand um, their uh, what I call outreach team, outreach caring team for the elderly. Mm -hmm. uh, from previously, we have five to six teams uh, from, for the whole Macau. Now we turn into seven to eight. And we can see that for outreach service uh, in this category has been um, invested by the government mm -hmm. and pulling a lot of money and resources into it. So we can see that, yes, uh, that's the direction uh, of the demographic is changing. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, uh, from a uh, pilot study that we did uh, previously, that um, the younger gen generation, uh, in particular uh, uh, women, female, they are willing to take care of their uh, elderly mm -hmm. parents. Um, uh, so that's why uh, in between uh, 34 to 55 years old, um, uh, this group of population, they're willing to take care of the elderly, but at the same time, they also have their own family to take care of. Mm -hmm. So add on to the stress, add on to the pressure and all that. Even if they take care of them, they need help. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and thirdly, um, we can also see that um, for every uh, district in Macau, for every area in Macau, uh, we see a lot of uh, buildings that are, are occupied by uh, our older uh, people. Mm -hmm. and different kind of structure, different uh, conditions, living conditions. And so the governments have to uh, take a, 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 you know, a, faith, a leap of faith to transform the elderly care from the residential care setting to the outreach services. Mm -hmm. I think in the next five years, I'm hoping to see the government to put at least uh, three times to four times of the resource they are currently putting in into these outreach services. Mm -hmm. Um, also on the policy address and another area of research, you have many, <laughs> uh, the, the new Center for Elderly with Dementia that was announced also. Do you think that's something that is missing in Macau? Uh, right now, the government uh, have been uh, uh, doing a lot of uh, projects and starting a lot of initiative towards uh, dementia. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, from, uh, if I remember correctly, from 2010, you know, there are already, you know, organization, professional organizations that, uh, you know, being put forward that we have to uh, address the needs of uh, dementia. Um, and the government take in, took into that uh, into account. So when we look at uh, the government policy address in 2005, 2006, you know, every year they will put this as one of the most important area to, to put their resource mm -hmm. to. And we can see the 2020 one there are also some line mentioned in this area. Yeah. So, and I also know that uh, maybe in a year or two, there will be a residential care setting, mm -hmm. in particular for the most severe case of dementia people. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, integrated by a daycare center for dementia, mm -hmm. uh, for dementia people. But the fact that it shows up always in the policy address up until now, do you think it's because it wasn't done enough to support these people with dementia? Well, because there are, there are different levels uh, of what, I, what we call uh, cognitive disorder, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so it is different in terms of um, the caring and also it's different in terms of resources to put into these uh, three levels of care. 
For the mild one, usually daycare center outreach team can be catered for. No. Mm -hmm. But as we go more severe, mm -hmm. they usually w um, will need to reside in a nursing home mm -hmm. because there you can find a nursing home facility with medical facility. Uh, and also uh, professional staff are always there for 24 hours. And that actually knows how to deal with. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, another project of the government is the re-employment of elderly people. Is this a good idea? Well, uh, <laughs> good questions. <laughs> is it a good idea? I actually had a discussion with a number of groups of um, people who are about to retire. Mm -hmm. And I throw in this idea that you know, whether they would still want to continue uh, to be employed or any form of employment. I get a two extreme uh, response. Okay. One, they said that, you know, once I get out of work, you know, why I don't come am back. I throwing, my, <laughs> throwing myself into this hole again? You know, they don't want to wake up every day, have a, uh, you know, dead schedule. end schedule. Yeah. Yeah. So on the other hand, uh, people responded to say that they would like to still participate in so-called workforce, mm -hmm. but a more flexible uh, mode. For example, they can do casual, they can do mentorship, uh, they can even do training. Mm -hmm. So their role is different. Mm -hmm. It's transition between the former function in their job and to kind of accommodate uh, because they just retired. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It has to be a special kind of, of work, not exactly like it is in the, in the same system that it is now. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the government put out uh, a, a tax a reduction scheme mm -hmm. uh, for uh, elderly yeah. Or for, uh, I won't call them elderly because it's too, they are too young. It you is, know? it is. It's weird that the youth goes until 45 and exactly. then elderly starts at 65 yeah. or 60 in, in the, the bus yeah. pass case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, changing a little bit the subject, still in the, the social work, I would like you for you to, to evaluate a little bit of the social work during this pandemic that we cannot avoid talk about, mm. the COVID-19. Um, specifically, is there, are there enough methods to, to deal with depression? Because that's what we heard, we, what we hear more about. People are depressed because they cannot leave. Not, it's not the case in Macau, but it is the case of people that are, cannot come in, come back home or cannot go back home if they're stranded here. So are there enough methods for social workers to deal with a pandemic like this in Macau? Are they prepared? That's my first question. And to deal specifically with depression, including for minorities? there are in Macau? Are they prepared? I think in terms of, you know, human, he human history has a really, um, uh, has taken a different approach when it comes to meeting new challenges and meeting new problems. I think humans have a good, really adaptation skills. Um, and what I see and observed uh, during this pandemic, uh, I'm, I'm seeing that uh, organization, NGOs, um, workers or professional staffs, they are thinking about a different approach to, you know, cater the needs of uh, their clients, of their adapting. service user. They're adapting. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, when you mention about uh, there might be issues dealing with depressions or anxiety, uh, uh, whether in a younger group or older people, they are transforming their services from face to face to online. Mm -hmm. And I am, that's why I would like also to suggest that in terms of the new building for elderly or even in the future, we might have new building for young pe younger people, younger groups. We should think about whether we should put in place uh, a facility that allows them to, you know, um, to, to do counseling online at their home. Mm -hmm. Or even, um, well, we started a project called Community Healthcare, right? And uh, the idea of it is to have uh, devices that can measure it and have immediate response in their own home okay. on a daily basis. So I'm, I'm hoping that these, in terms of mobile health devices that can be put in place in every facilities that the government is trying to put forward mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. And in, re in regards to the, the help provided to minorities, like I'm talking specifically about non-Chinese non, uh, non -Chinese or Portuguese speakers, uh, because we do have Indonesian, Filipino, Vietnamese people, uh, Indian, Nepalese, so many that are in need of support. Do you think it's enough? What do we have in Macau? On several occasions, that uh, even to, uh, in terms of in this, within seminars or conferences or even during meetings, um, I've also uh, expressed the concern of uh, NGOs 
pro providing services to people from other places. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we have a larger group from Philippines, Indonesia, right? The mm -hmm. Pelis, uh, you name it, right? Because Macau have turn, turned themselves into a more internationalized city. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, we start to see a number of NGOs to put forward uh, um, programs uh, for expats. Mm -hmm. So it is a positive change and transition. But the question is whether the professionals in Macau are prepared to deal with um, service user coming from a different cultural background, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. speaking a different uh, languages. Um, well, that's Are why we, we <laughs> right now, no. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm looking forward to see whether we have a, a training program or even to prepare them uh, to deal with, you know, groups of people who have needs. Mm -hmm. yeah, and this should, should expand to the government or should stay in the hands of NGOs? Well, in Macau, you have to collaborate mm -hmm. between the government and the NGOs yeah. and even to the community, right? Because we are a small city. Yeah. We're not like, you know, other you know, major big country. And in Macau, it's, there is a, a sense of uh, friendship, I would, I would say, mm -hmm. that we can deal with the problem when we work together. And, well, that's why I'm hoping. I always have, have my hopes up. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you, it's funny you're mentioning the, the friendship and the cooperation because I do have a question for you that I think it might be hard to answer. Yes, um, when it was uh, the, the ma majority of people, when we talked about welcoming the Macau residents that mm. were in Wuhan, the mm. center of this coronavirus, there were a lot of people against going to pick them up and welcoming here in the city, mm. although they are Macau residents. Mm. Some of the students in quarantine that came back from European countries or um, most, mostly from European countries, but are Macau natives, were also bullied online. Mm. So we do have that sense of community and strength when we're together. But at the same time, we do have this kind of of um, rejection towards this, especially when it comes to to this disease. How do you perceive this? <laughs> well, when you look at it, um, it is really the first time when Macau and even the whole world are facing this kind of you know, pandemic, this kind of outbreak. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, for the past couple of few months, every day when we turn on the news, we we'll all, we'll always see that oh, how many people got uh, infected, how many people died, mm -hmm. you know, this kind of um, news surrounding this negativity um, actually help nurturing this sense of anxiety within the community. So it's understandable that, um, you know, people in Macau or even in other parts of the world, they are afraid to kind of, uh, uh, you know, facing the issues of whether we should have them back or even we should, uh, you know, send a flight over there and to pick them up, even though they are Macau residents, but at the same time, they're human as well. So they were scared? Well, yeah, because they're not sure. Mm -hmm. Not everyone knows exactly how to deal with it. It's a hu it is in human nature mm -hmm. when we face this sort of uh, big events in life. Uh, sometimes we make decisions that maybe later on we regret it to make. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the um, same goes for the people that were bullying online, the students that were in quarantine. It's the same. Are we talking about the same situation? Well, that is different. Okay. Yeah, this is purely bullying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and after that, I know that uh, some um, organization, especially dealing with youth service, mm -hmm. um, they are actually put their, uh, put their teams on it and to uh, help to manage it. Mm -hmm. The Health Bureau also, well, the Center for, for, for the Novel Coronavirus actually talked about it also. So it's a different situation. It's just people being mean yes. because they can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's different. It's different. Um, yeah, there's different aspect we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. so. Um, you, you have a PhD in health sciences. Mm. Uh, do you, what's your overall evaluation of how Macau de is dealing because we're still dealing with this pandemic? Well, okay, it's, well, we can spend the next hour to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if you look at how the government responded during this pandemic, I think they are taking a very brave stand. Uh, you know, it's a new government, uh, a team where not everyone have experience working collaboratively between different departments. You know, it's a new groups of people at the top management and how they responded at a quick, a very fast manner mm -hmm. um, and a very pragmatic 
uh, that is that to me is some brave stuff to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why, like in terms of, uh, you know, when the world is crying out for a face mask. Or, or even you know, uh, talking about how we boost up the economy, how to help the uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, the government taking a very uh, active stand uh, to make sure that the city won't go crazy mm -hmm. because of this. And yes, sure, we, we're gonna take some heat, uh, you know, uh, when you look at the uh, economic data mm -hmm. that we know that it's going to be a, a, a downturn. But think about what we made for the past 20 years as a whole city, a small city like Macau. It's what's being used now. It's being used yeah. now and it's, it's, uh, it's logical to use it. I mean, so that's why the uh, new chief uh, uh, executive, you know, he's very put from putting forward uh, a questions or even um, something to, for, for the community as a whole to ponder about, you know, what are you going to do in terms of difficulties? Mm -hmm. You're part of Macau, you're staying in Macau. So, Let's, let's do this together, let's work this out together. So and they took the measures earlier than, yeah, than most The neighboring, neighboring regions. Uh, regions. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm hoping to see that even though this year's policy address mostly center around pandemics and the impact mm -hmm. on the outbreaks. So I'm looking into after this, what's next? You know, what are, going, what are they going to do uh, to not just revive the city, but also to make it developed for, to prepare for the future, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the world will not stop. Mm -hmm. the, we, unfortunately, we have just a little more time. We, I could stay here with one hour with you talking <laughs> about this, but um, you, you, because of also this pandemic, the, the self-management of health has been talked a lot, and you recently presented uh, something on it, the inevitability of mobile self-management of health and its demanding connection to the community. What are we talking about here? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so right now we are, we are uh, using a very traditional form of healthcare, right? Mm -hmm. We have to go face to face, we have to go to the clinic or even to the hospitals. Mm -hmm. And we, as we know that the, um, the burden of the hospital is, is too great, right? Mm -hmm. And in terms of the pandemic and also other healthcare needs. So what I'm talking about here, that if on, on the, even on the policy address, you know, they always put forward a, a statement called prevention first, right? So I am uh, putting forward an, an idea that we should, we, should, um, we should do a mobile healthcare system. That's what you mentioned when we were talking about the, the young, having a place for young people to reside. Yes. So the online... Um... The online, the devices, mm -hmm. they put in the, their own home or even to NGOs, organization center, uh, and they measure it on a daily basis and the data will be f live feed uh, uh, back to the station, uh, back to the control panel mm -hmm. so that the uh, analysts and researchers and even the care providers can look at the, the groups of people that under their care and to see what sort of health needs or problems they are, they are actually meeting or facing. Um, you know. So it's a continuous uh, care provided in their own home, a monitoring system. At the same time, we can provide uh, a minimum uh, level of healthcare needs. Mm -hmm. That would help to, to analyze cha eventual changes in the, in the person's behavioral or health situation yes. Yes. immediately. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Because we're working not just with, with university, but we're working with NGOs, we're working with uh, private clinics, mm -hmm. or even clinics that uh, you know under the structure of NGOs. So we're working with different parties to bring uh, a preventative first level of response right in the community. Mm -hmm. That's why community care, healthcare is the, is, is the future, is the next level that we have to look into, mm -hmm. not just at the hospital care. Are you presenting that to the government soon? Uh, we are, we are presenting presented in August, mm -hmm. uh, not, not to the government, but actually to our, a wider public. Um, we, have collected, uh, we are collecting data, um, and right now we are up to about 700 data a preliminary data mm -hmm. that we are hoping to present it uh, in a press conference in August okay. um, to see, um, you know, during this time, um, in terms of all the health indicators, most of the health indicators, and also as well as their um, emotional uh, health state. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping to present something to the community for us to look at. Mm -hmm. That would be something using by their own mobile phone or it would need a specific uh, equipment or it's just something that we can do with our phones? Well right now we are uh, distributing devices okay. um, 
to to the participants. Mm -hmm. So they bring it into their own home, own home or even they work with NGOs. Um, so they collected the data. Of course, they have to be really good at um, using these devices, but it's quite simple. Okay. And, and I'm sensing that in the future, you know, mobile devices or any technological devices is not something strange to the generation in the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so. and it was it was is going to help the the, the social, the 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 elf um, authorities also to to have something to rely on. Yeah, and we don't have uh, health data for the whole of Macau mm -hmm. as of this Just moment. Just the people that look search yeah. help from yeah, the elf yeah. bureau. Yeah. Um, Besides that, you, 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 have, you are the coordinator of the Department of Innovative Social Work, also part of the Macau Healthy Lifestyle Research Center. I would like to know, besides that project, if you have any others that you'd like to share with us or future plans, what's the, in terms of the courses or other projects that you have? Well, one project is already enough, but um, <laughs> uh, well, the other idea is, um, is to um, help to testing of different sort of health monitoring devices. Um, because we have so many, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, if we have so many, um, they might have, uh, according to different readings or recording methods or even the accuracy of these devices, because we want to get as close as possible, right? So we are hoping to test out at least 10 different brands of mm -hmm. devices um, that we can validate or even make it, you know, make us to choose whether which one we should use for our future projects mm -hmm. in this community healthcare. Um, system. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you doing that with students from, from your courses or is just a project of people that are already um, into this area? We have, uh, we have collaborated with uh, faculty members and also students as well and also with uh, NGOs mm -hmm. and um, I mean we cannot do research alone at the university level we have to especially when we're working something that deals with mm -hmm. human yeah. right yeah. so we are working with the community uh, the NGOs, the social workers, uh, the counselors, even the nurses and doctors. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a multidisciplinary team that collaborated on the same project. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope that we talk about this again in August when it's released. And thank you so much. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thank, thank you. you so much for being with us here thank on the you. show again. <laughs> thank thank you, you so much. That's all for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. This is TDM Talk Show. We'll be back next week.